As you can see, we have finally arrived in Hamburg. Now we have a delicious fish roll for breakfast at the Landungsbrücke. But today, of course, we are going to Marek's Playroom. For years, they are known for the largest and most difficult custom scooter creations in the scooter scene. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Come in. Right now, we've made ourselves comfortable here in the playroom on this beautiful Chesterfield couch. Of course, the first thing I would like to know about Marek is who he is and what kind of place the playroom is. Marek, who are you? Marek. <laughs> and I'm sitting on a real Chesterfield couch. We really value that. I founded the playroom together with my friend Sven almost eight years ago. The interesting thing is that this workshop is in a basement, so of course everything is very cramped here. It's really amazing that you were able to set up such a workshop here. That's exactly the point. You first have to get space in Hamburg, where you can screw around. We just get lucky here. Of course you have to take everything you can get. This is very interesting. When you come down here, how many people work here? Six people work here. On 80 square meters, that's very little space for six people, because everyone has several scooters to work on. How do you manage to keep order here? It has always been a dream of mine to form such a community with several people. You just have to ask the other person every now and then to clean up or compromise or something. That has already annoyed some here. Your special hobby in the scooter scene are the that would be the custom shows. I admit that outright. People say I'm cup crazy and I can't deny that. But I also have a lot of fun building something. Who else is here in the playroom? As I said, we are six people. Today Henrik and Sven are here as well as our Muscat Seaman, our venerable member. Come on over here, we still have some room on the couch. Cheers. And you are? I'm Sven. So you're the one who co-founded this? Yes, I also have one, two projects here, but I'm not as driven as Marek is. Okay. Nevertheless, of course, I do a lot of work on my own scooters here. Okay. I also have three scooters here, two to be precise. I'm always on the go with the other scooter. Of course, we'll have to take a closer look at it later. And your name is? I'm Hendrik. I'm also relatively new. I'm from Eimsbüttel. I've bought a tire here by chance. We found each other quite sympathetic and was then asked if I would like to help out here. My wife was very happy that the three scooters we have here now are no longer in our basement. How did you come up with the name Playroom? I think my girlfriend came up with the idea. She said it one time and that's how it happened. And we definitely wanted to have a name that didn't sound English but classic German. You also have a very nice mascot. We still have to show you that. This is very cool. I can always say it's shown here or here, and then they have to show that in post-production. And if they're really smart, they will cut out my comment. We are now standing in front of my personal favorite scooter of yours. Perhaps even one of the most beautiful custom scooters in Germany, in my opinion. Namely, the Dupont Lambretta. The front half is actually a Lambretta. The rear part is a Kawasaki GP7500S. I lengthened the rear frame a bit, widened it and actually put it over it. You can see that it doesn't look like a Kawasaki. The entire technology is located under these Lambretta side hoods. That's right, although part of the Kawasaki frame is still there as well. Before we look underneath, I would like to know what kind of paint job you have chosen here. The paint comes from a so-called library of the NASCAR Winston Cup series. The number 24 was owned by NASCAR driver Jeff Gordon, who had his car painted like this. There were also different levels of evolution. I then had the paint adapted accordingly. Now, of course, we want to see what's underneath. Then, let's open it. 
voila, connectors, error code posters, air filter, carburetor system. You can already see it wonderfully that this is the old Kawasaki frame. Here it was shortened. Two bridges are used here that carry the frame loop. At the front under the bridge piece is the area where both frames meet. Just a quick detail, I think the tank is very nice. This is now in the front where the glove box is located with a jet latch. Long enough chatting, now we want to hear something. Then let's switch on the lambretta. Voila! It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Now we've gone back inside and we're standing at one of Marek's scooters again. This scooter has a certain theme again, doesn't it? The theme of this scooter is Gran Turismo. In fact, I stumbled across a photo of an Aston Martin DB4. The color looked really amazing in the old pictures. Gran Turismo means lightweight construction, which means aluminum and long range. However, this was not a serious Aston Martin but a special vehicle that was only modified for racing. That's right, Aston Martin DB4. The vehicle had the number plate 2VEV, and that's what the scooter was called at first, which I found stupid and a bit bulky. Then a friend of mine came and said, my god, the headquarters in England of Aston Martin is in Gaden. Why don't you just call the scooter Gaden? Gaden? Okay. Sounded a bit strange at first, but in the end I found the name Gaden quite good. Did your boyfriend suggest it to you? Yeah, my boyfriend suggested it to me. Please leave that in, that's great. My personal highlight is the seat back here. I've seen the scooter a few times in pictures and just thought to myself, okay, it's an aluminum seat. But in real life, it looks very cool. It has an old-school airplane look, or looks even a little bit like an airplane tank, right? It actually totally failed. I went completely delusional and thought that after I made my tank out of aluminum, I'll make the seat out of aluminum too. And of course the whole thing has to be made of one car, so I pushed everything into place and rolled it. Then I started welding and it came back to me on the side of the scooter and put the repair plate in there. Then I rolled it again and adjusted it and it came to me again while I was welding. And after I remembered that the third time I welded it I said I'm going to rivet it now. Then I revited that in and you just have to stand by the fact that you can't do that probably. And here in the front is the tank. How many liters are in there? 12 liters. 12 liters. I also find the cap quite cool, which fits very well with the seat. This is a racing cap, then can be opened pretty quickly. How do you open that? Simply pull, then lift it a little, and the virtual rotation point of it, that's the rest. This is all made again with extra aluminum parts. You have a completely self-constructed disc brake on the front wheel. Yes, exactly. I had already used the disc brake for the 10-inch Terror and the straight bullet PX80 Vespa. The only thing that is so special here that it is mirrored. That means I have a mirrored Aldi fork in it because the rim is directional. So the fork needs to be placed on the other side. Marek has not only a... Marek has not only rebuilt an Aldi swing arm, milled and fitted it with an anti-dive disc brake, but has also mirrored and built it on an automatic fork. So that's pretty... An Aldi fork. That's an Aldi fork? That's a mirrored Aldi fork. That's insane. Well, the man has real ambition and a lot of time. Unbelievable. No, I like it very much. Is there anything else in here? Yes, we actually have a second tank. Because such a BFA engine not only has power, but is also thirsty. Here are another 8 liters of additional fuel under the cheek. 
You can also reach the tank with this nice quick release cap. Turn it on. Well, not inside with the engine, but I see you already have this chip here. Exactly. You put the chip on here and ding, there you go. The ignition is on and everything is lit. Do you have to keep the chip on here the whole time you ride? No, of course it stays on while riding. To switch it off, you either press the red button, which interrupts the ignition, or you put the chip back on it. Then the whole scooter is off. Which engine is awesome enough to fit in the scooter? It can only be a BFA engine, right? Thanks, that's what I wanted to hear. So it's a BFA 306cc engine. Could you remove the side panel? Of course. He's right, it is a BFA engine. <laughs> And how much horsepower does it have? 57 HP on the dyno. I'm pressed at the wheel made of the box. That's right. You actually assembled everything out of the box. The carburetor turned forward and everything else is original setup. Damn. 57 horsepower with the original setup is quite something. I think we had 54 or 55 horsepower with our PX. So that's quite good. Nice scooter, next scooter. So, we have a new roller here. We have a new scooter here. It's not quite finished yet, but it's a project. I saw the scooter in the back corner and because it's not finished yet, it was a bit hidden. But I thought it was cool because it's a different idea. That's why I thought we should definitely introduce it to you. Can you tell us something about it, Sven? Yeah, also um, the roller and the scooter is a basic model of a Vespa GS3 and I was bored at some point with this whole look and I just had to tear everything apart. Und dann habe ich angefangen, mir Gedanken zu machen, okay, was mache ich damit? Then I started to think about what to do with it. And since I used to skateboard, I found the style of it quite nice. Trittleisten aus dem Skateboardholz zu machen und I thought it would be quite fitting to make the treads out of skateboard wood, or here in the front to make the horn cover out of a skateboard ramp wood. Unter anderem habe ich dann natürlich zu diesem eigentlichen Grafikkonzept, was hier drauf ist, dann I also commissioned a graphic design office to design something for this graphic concept, which is shown here. What is written on the scooter? It says skate or die, and in some passages also playroom. Ich finde es auch gut, mal einen Uldi zu sehen, der I also think it's good to see an oldie that's not just an oldie, not just restored to original or somehow trimmed to old. Of course, these old scooters are beautiful and look cool, but it's such a common fashion. But this is something different. This is its own concept. What else goes into the engine? A Quadrini cylinder will be installed. At the moment the ATCC engine is mounted inside, which will serve as a base for the rest of the engine. Seitlich ist dort ein uh, Curly uh, Auspuff von Scooter and Service. On the side is a Curly Exhaust from Scooter and Service, which I have modified so that it fits under the welded side hood. Very cool. A scooter that also convinces with a really artistic aspect. Thank you, Sven. By the way, our working title is The Toilet Door. I heard Pop Toilet Door earlier. But I have no idea why. Again, a new scooter with a new owner, Norman. Not a permanent member of the playroom, but as they say, friend of the house or even hang around. <laughs> anyway, he has a nice scooter and that's why he has no other choice than to present his scooter here in the spotlight. Yeah, this was once a PX80 that I bought in 2009 in Bremen via eBay. At a time for a ridiculous sum of 900 euros. Then I drove back to Bremen, picked up the scooter, drove back to Hamburg with a broken gear shaft and had a million jumping gears. Then it just came little by little that I optimized the scooter a bit more and further adapted it. I just really like the whole look of the scooter. It's a lowered fork with a T5 fender and a T5 cascade. Yeah. All beautifully executed, and here you have holes in the glove box? I was bored and had a figure eight wheel left. The holes honestly make no sense, just like the gills here in the front. I used to work at Bowman Foss, and I got this old workshop locker from there and welded it in. But it has no meaning and no purpose. 
Nevertheless, I think it's a very nice scooter, we definitely had to introduce it. Thank you Norman for wanting to do this, and that brings us to the next scooter. Further, further, a bit further away from here, maybe put it a little sideways at the front. Yeah, and wait, can you go a bit backwards, is that okay? Shall we make a quick cut? A Vyatka is like a Vespa copy with a somewhat unique aesthetic, but also with its own fan group, and among them is a fanboy called Marek. That's not really true. <laughs> really not. I actually only bought the Vyatka because it was cheaper than a GA3 Vespa and it looks almost the same. And because in the end I simply had doubts about cutting up such an original scooter. With such a Vyatka I think you can just do it with no penalty. The Vyatka itself is not so spectacular by itself. I mean, it's rare, but the spectacular part is of course once again the combination with the engine. And here Marek has really outdone himself, because he installed a Zabel engine. Zabel engines come from the motocross sidecar sport, where you can drive the 700 ccm. You have a motocross machine with a sidecar that makes a lot of steam. These are numbers that you have to let sink in first. One cylinder, two strokes, 700 cc, 89 horsepower. An incredible amount of displacement, an incredible amount of steam, which is difficult to achieve even in a motorcycle. How long do you think it will take you to finish this project? I hope that I can at least put them to the test in the fall. But then I'll definitely need at least nine months on top of that to finish the rest. At least to the extent that you can say I have a rolling chassis that you can also kick on, clutch and switch. It will take until about September, I think. You can see what an insane amount of work it is. This part of the chassis is slightly offset forward and here are 10 centimeters inserted and the whole thing can also be removed, I think? You can take that off. You have to remove it, otherwise you won't be able to get to the engine afterwards. I have beautiful latches here. This one is still a demo though. It's not secure on the other side yet. But over here it already works. I'll open it. You pull this backwards like this, then the rear comes off. And what are these latches actually made for? These latches are actually used to close aircraft engine hoods. Amazing. Now you can see the engine again in all its glory. It's crazy what diameter the cylinder has. What bore does it have? A 100 mm bore. Very beautiful. So when the scooter is ready, you definitely have to come visit us in Landsberg and test that thing on our dyno bench. I will do that. Okay, we're really excited about that. So, that was That was it with Hamburg and the playroom. Thank you guys for giving us a glimpse into your play or almost living room with Persian carpet and chaise lounge. Marek, it was an honor. Simon, Sven, Norman. Cheers! See you next time! And if you liked it, press the like button and ring the bell. And don't forget to tune in if you want to see another workshop show. Cheers! That tingles. That sparkles on the tongue. The mineral water. Was it good? And a Vyatka is actually the Russian non-licensed build of a Vespa. Cut up any other white frame and the Vyatka is... Oh shit. Why are you laughing? The underpants would be embarrassing for me too. If I were you, I would never go out with the CR700 pants. CR700 pants? I would be really embarrassed. If only you could be more serious.